In the last few years, we have been treated to a number of spectacular documentaries within the footballing world. The likes of Manchester City, Tottenham, Juventus and the Brazilian national team have all starred in their very own All or Nothing series. Now, as many of us know, it's Arsenal's turn to take the footballing world by storm. In every All or Nothing series we've seen thus far, they have featured a consistent pattern of player cameos aligned with periods of the season in which those players starred in. For example, throughout the Manchester City documentary, they featured the likes of Raheem Sterling, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Vincent Company, and many more as well. Here are my official predictions for which periods of the season each Arsenal player will feature in for our up-and-coming All or Nothing series. First and foremost, as many of us regrettably remember, Arsenal couldn't have started the Premier League season any worse than they did. Three games, three losses, zero goals. This seems primed to be the focus of the opening episode as hinted in the recent trailer. With this, my prediction is that the focus will be on both Mikel Arteta and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Arteta, who I expect to feature in most episodes throughout the show, will be the focus considering Arsenal's poor start to the season and the external pressure on him and his job. I expect Aubameyang, who was club captain at the time, to also feature prominently in the first episode. Although the Gabonese striker was absent in Arsenal's 2-0 loss against Brentford due to contracted COVID, he was a sub in Arsenal's 2-0 loss against Chelsea. After the Chelsea game, Arsenal faced West Brom in the Cup, where he scored a hat-trick in a 6-0 win. I believe this will probably be the climax of the first episode, considering it was Arsenal's first win of the season. My prediction is that they'll start the episode off with the two losses against Brentford and Chelsea, and then finish the episode off with the 6-0 win against West Brom, featuring Aubameyang's hat-trick as a bounce-back moment. Moving into the next episode, I believe Arsenal will introduce Martin Odegaard and feature his narrative about returning to the club on a permanent basis. With this, the episode will start with Arsenal's brutal loss against Manchester City, followed up by Arsenal's first league wins against both Norwich and Burnley, the latter in which is where Odegaard scored a magical free kick. Moving on, the show will quickly shift focus to Emil Smith-Rowe, portraying his breakthrough into the first team from the following season, whilst also showcasing his role in Arsenal's 3-1 win in the North London Derby, in which the Englishman played a promising role in. Next up, I believe the series will bring forth new signing Aaron Ramsdale, featuring his incredible performances against both Brighton and Leicester, as well as the narrative about his arrival at the club and winning the number one spot. After that, I believe the series will quickly shift focus as Arsenal travel to Anfield to face Liverpool. In what was Arsenal's biggest test since their start of the season, I predict that Nuno Tavares will be the next focus of the series, as they introduce yet another summer signing while also highlighting his tough game at Anfield, in which Arsenal go on to lose 4-0. With this, they'll move on to the Newcastle game, where both Arsenal and Tavares have bounced back performances. Moving on, Arsenal hit another rough patch in which they lose their next two games against both Manchester United and Everton. At this point in the series, I think they'll focus on Gabriel Macheles, telling his story about his time at the club, as well as featuring parts of his life at home and preparation for becoming a father. It's also worth noting that this is around the time when Aubameyang is stripped of the captaincy, and I believe Arteta could once again feature prominently. In Arsenal's pivotal game against Southampton, following two losses as well as Arteta's decision to drop a Bamiang, Gabriel scores in Arsenal's 3-0 win and alludes to his baby in his celebration. Moving on to the next episode, I believe the documentary will focus on Gabriel Martinelli, who was a massive beneficiary from Arteta's decision to drop a Bamiang. Martinelli becomes a starter in the team after Bamiang is dropped and scores a massive goal against West Ham, followed by two goals against Leeds. It's only natural that the episode portrays Martinelli's incredible journey to Arsenal and how the Brazilian has had to bide his time to take his opportunity under Arteta. From one star boy to another, from here I think the series will shift focus to Bakayo Staka, who could honestly feature at any point during the season. However, I think this would be a good point to feature Saka, whose two goals against Norwich and a massive goal against City in what ended up being a heartbreaking loss against the champions, but a marvelous performance nonetheless and a key sign of progress in Arsenal's season. 
Saka's narrative will probably feature his story from the hail end, as well as his penalty miss in last summer's Euros. Following the City game, Arsenal faced Nottingham Forest in the Cup. At this point in the show, I think the series will focus on Ben White, who started in Arsenal's loss to Forest, which ended their Cup run. Arsenal then travelled to Anfield, in which they faced Liverpool, and battled to hold on to a 0-0 draw, after Granit Xhaka was sent off. White was brilliant in that game away at Anfield, and while I think his narrative will also feature his arrival at the club and the pressures of dealing with his price tag. Next up, Arsenal face Liverpool in the second leg at home, in a game where Arsenal go on to lose 2-0. I believe the series will focus on Lacazette at this point, and his narrative of taking up the captaincy as well as his struggles for goals this season. In the Liverpool game, Lacazette hit the crossbar, while in the following game he missed a crucial chance against Burnley in what ended up being a 0-0 draw. I believe a component of the narrative will be that his role is bigger than just goals, as part of his job as captain is to act as a leader, specifically by helping the younger players at the club while also contributing in other ways on the field. I think the series will focus on his role in Arsenal's 2-1 win against Brentford, in which Lacazette played his role in the build-up to both goals, scored by Saka and Smith Rowe, while his cameo will finish with his iconic last-minute winner against Wolves at the Emirates. Moving on to the next episode, I think Arsenal will start with Thomas Partey. In his cameo, I think the series will focus on his struggles with injury during his time at the club, as well as his story growing up in Ghana. On the footballing side of things, I think the series will showcase Arsenal's 2 0 win against Leicester, in which Partey scores the opening goal. Next up, it's Burnt Leno's time to shine, as Ramsdale is injured for the Aston Villa match. His cameo will talk about the struggles with getting dropped from the team, but focusing on the importance of maintaining his professionalism, which is showcased in his brilliant performance against Villa, in which Arsenal win 1-0 and Leno keeps a clean sheet. I think this episode will also focus on the collective spirit within the team, which is showcased when the majority of the Arsenal team go to celebrate with Leno after his fine save to secure Arsenal's victory against Villa. Moving on to the final two episodes, I believe the series will start by focusing on Eddie and Ketia. And Ketia watches from the bench as Arsenal lose three consecutive games against Palace, Brighton, and Southampton. Up next is a crucial game against Chelsea, where Ketia is included in the starting 11 and finally gets his opportunity to shine. And Ketia scores two goals in Arsenal's 4 2 victory against the Blues. I think the majority of his cameo will focus on his time in the Arsenal Academy as well as his struggles with breaking into the first team, with his cameo finishing with him taking his chance against Chelsea. Next up is Granit Xhaka. Xhaka, like Saka, could feature at many points throughout the series, considering some of the controversial moments he was involved in throughout the season. Ultimately, however, I think his cameo will come towards the end of the season, where he plays a crucial role in Arsenal's win against Chelsea, as well as their win against United, and his goal that seals the game for the Gunners. Xhaka will open up about his struggles at the club, and his narrative will feature his redemption story in which he wins back the fan base. Last but not least, in the final episode of the series, I believe that Rob Holding will be the focus. Holding, who is a part of the leadership group at Arsenal, will talk about his time at the club and being one of the senior members of the squad. The episode will start with his goal against West Ham in a game in which Arsenal win 2-1, and followed up with his red card against Spurs, which ultimately cost Arsenal the game and also their place in the top four. This episode will highlight the ups and downs of football, which was very applicable to Arsenal's entire season. Ultimately, while Arsenal didn't secure a top four, the series will conclude by highlighting the overall positivity at the club and the team's growth throughout the season. I think there's a chance that they feature Louis Dunford and his song North London Forever and highlight the connection that has been made between the club and the fans, which was ultimately the first step of Arteta's overarching plan for the club. To conclude, those are my predictions for the All or Nothing series. While I know I'm missing quite a few key players, including the likes of Tierney, Tomiyasu, Lakonga, El Neni, Cedric, and Pepe, who I believe could all feature at some point in the series, it was hard to find places where they'd fit in. 
Let me know in the comments section below where you believe their cameos could take place and whether or not you agree with some of my predictions. As always, thanks for the support. It's nice to be back. Peace.